Hello, my name is Mr. Chips, and I will teach you how to analyze the global behavior of functions using both the first and second derivatives. Here we have a function f of x. In order to find its critical points, we have to set the derivative equal to zero or c where it is undefined. The critical points are where the derivative is equal to zero or undefined. So let's find f prime of x. We have 3x squared minus 12. This always exists for all x, so let's set this thing equal to zero. We can factor out a 3, yielding x squared minus 4, and of course that means that our critical points are at x equals plus or minus 2. Because the derivative is equal to 0 at plus or minus 2, we have a horizontal tangent line at those points. So these are possible extrema, but to figure out whether they really are extrema, we have to do our line analysis and determine whether our derivative is changing signs at those two points. We'll look to the left at negative 2. How about negative 3? Well, f prime is positive there, and because we have no double roots, we can just uh, alternate the signs in between. Now, because the derivative is changing from positive to negative at x equals negative 2, we have a hill. That means that we have a relative maximum at x equals negative 2. And because the derivative is changing from negative to positive at x equals 2, we have a valley, which means that we have a relative minimum at x equals 2. Because our signs are changing, these are local extrema. Now, our function increases whenever f prime is positive because it's because f would then be going up. The slope is positive. And of course, f prime is positive on negative infinity to negative 2, union 2 to infinity. And f is decreasing on negative 2 to 2. And this is our first derivative analysis. That's it. We're done. Now let's move on to our second derivative analysis. We'll do the exact same thing for the second derivative. So our first derivative was 3x squared minus 12. That means our second derivative is 6x. And now let's find the critical points of f prime. These are possible inflection points. That's what we're going to call them. They're not exactly critical points. Rather, we'll call them possible inflection points. And we'll get to what inflection point is a little bit later. That means that we have a possible inflection point at x equals 0 because my second derivative is either 0 or undefined there. Now, I want to see whether my second derivative sign is changing at x equals 0. Well, look to the left of x equals 0. How about negative 1? Well, that means that our second derivative is negative to the left of 0 and therefore positive to the right of 0. Because the sign of f prime is changing, x equals 0 is indeed a critical point, or sorry, an inflection point. Furthermore, because f double prime is negative to the left of zero, we say that f is concave down. And when f double prime is positive, f is concave up. Let's talk first about concavity. Here's some sinusoidal wave from point A to point B, and the green points in between are called inflection points. These are inflection points because the second derivative is changing sign at these two points. Now, what does the second derivative actually tell us? Well, the first derivative tells us whether a function's increasing or decreasing, and the second derivative tells us concavity. So right in there, this function is concave down because it looks like a sad face. To the right of that green point, our function is concave up because it looks like a happy face. Now, a function is concave down when its second derivative is negative. And a function is concave up when its second derivative is positive. And the point where the second derivative changes sign is called the inflection point. So to the left of that green point, our second derivative is negative because our function is concave down. f is concave down. To the right of that point, our function is concave up, which means that f double prime is positive. At that green point, at the inflection point, f double prime either equals 0 or is undefined, just like the critical points for the first derivative. Now here's a function that we were working with a little bit earlier. This is x cubed plus 12x minus 12x plus 5. 
we found that our inflection point is at x equals 0. Now let's take a look at our first derivative analysis before looking at our second derivative analysis. To the left of x equals negative 2, our function is increasing. Furthermore, we had critical points at x equals negative 2 and x equals 2. In between x equals negative 2 and x equals 2, our function is decreasing. Now because our function is increasing to the left of negative 2, f prime is positive. At x equals negative 2, f prime is 0. In between negative 2 and 2, f prime is negative. At x equals negative 2, f prime is 0. And then becomes positive again. That's from our first derivative analysis that we did in the last video. Now let's take a look at what our second derivative tells us. So the first derivative gives us uh, the first derivative gives us increasing decreasing functions. The second derivative gives us concavity. To the left of x equals zero, this function is concave down. So f double prime is negative. At x equals 0, f double prime is 0. To the right of x equals 0, f double prime is positive because we have a happy face. Sad face to the left, concave down. Happy face to the right, concave up. This is what the second derivative tells us. Now let's look at our full analysis that we had done back in the last video so that we can actually see what the line analysis looks like with respect to the graph of f. So here we are a little bit closer. You'll notice that on f prime, we go positive, negative, positive again because f increases, decreases, and increases again. And of course, f double prime, we go from negative to positive because we are concave down to concave up.